Okay, so welcome and uh, my fantastic editor, i.e. my wife, just informed me that our brilliant cameraman, i.e. me, forgot to record the last little bit of the mash making part of the whiskey video. Um, so I forgot to record the pitching of the yeast and then the gravity readings. So this is the wash as it currently stands, ready to be transferred into the boiler and uh, shooting the distillation part of this video. Um, so yeah, the yeast combination that I did was our normal one bread yeast, one brewer yeast combination. And then our gravity readings before pitching the yeast was a 1085 or a 1.085 gravity reading. And it all fermented out to a 1010 or a 1010. Uh, giving us a ABV of 9.8 so yeah sorry for not recording that um, I guarantee that the cameraman will be punished and uh, yeah busy recording the distillation part so keep your eyes out for that and enjoy the rest of this video okay so hello and welcome to another beaver DIY day as promised we are making a whiskey and uh, I don't know if you guys are like me that stay in a very small town that has very limited resources when it comes to uh, home brewing or making your own distilled liquor or anything like that. Um, but for me, in a small town in the northwest of South Africa, it is quite difficult to get the products that I need. So um, I've decided to try and make a whiskey completely from scratch with only store-bought ingredients that I can get within my area. So first up is um, the malted barley. So malted barley you can't buy. I went to my local feed shop or a co-op and that's where I got barley. So a normal packet of barley that is designed for bird feed. So I took that barley, or in South Africa they call it hash. I took that barley, I soaked it in water for an hour, drained the water, left it for about 8 hours, soaked it in water again, drained the water. I did that about 4 times. After that what I did is I uh, laid them flat on a, uh, a baking tray with newspaper at the bottom and newspaper on top and I just kept wetting them down on every day. So because it's winter currently, this took about five days to completely malt. Um, this is still green, I haven't dried them. And yes, I also haven't removed the stems from the bottom of them. Um, I will allow a protein break uh, when I am busy boiling them, or before I boil them, I will allow a protein break to ensure that I don't get that uh, high foam of the protein coming through. So yeah, my barley is malted, it is still green, it has not been dried, so that's step number one. So I've got a whole tray of barley here um, that I'll be using to do my brewing with. Then I have two kilograms of your cracked corn. So this corn has been pre-cracked with white corn or white maize, and um, we'll be using two kilograms of that and then I will be using your raw oats. So this is raw oats once again to be used for bird feed or whatever they're going to use with it. So it's not rolled oats. Um, I just find raw oats in my oats whiskies that I do to have a better flavor than your rolled, rolled oats or your pre-made oats. Um, so I prefer to use these ones. So first up, what we need to do is we need to now crack all of these or mill all of our grains to ensure that we can um, get them pre-gelatinized and, uh, and get them into our 90 minute starch conversion where we're going to add the malted barley. So I'm just using a normal household blender. Once again, I'm trying to use things that everybody has or most people have access to and not fancy things. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to dump a bag of oats in, about halfway full for the 
blender, chuck it in, and just blend it up. Okay, so with most of the husks broken off, just gonna dump this into there. So just keep going with that process. Okay, so now with all your oats, um, all the, the husk broken and we have nice raw oats and all blended up, um, you don't have to blend it, you can use a normal uh, a cloth or a rolling pin just to break the husks. All you want to do is you want to expose the inside of these oats flakes to um, allow them to release their, uh, their starches. So what we're going to do now is uh, I'm going to gelatinize all my start, um, oats. So I've got pots on the boil here already. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to add my oats in, stir them up and uh, allow them to cook for about 20 minutes. So with um, my oats now being boiling for about 20-25 minutes, um, you will see that they are a nice thick soupy mix and that reason why I love the whole oats um, in its husk, not being rolled or anything like that. Um, you can smell it now, you can get that hay smell, um, that farmyard, that, that barnyard type of smells coming through here. Um, which you don't normally get from your standard oats. So I like those flavors and all that other things that they bring to the table. So like I said now with these now being uh, gelatinized properly, all I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the heat, leave them for another five minutes um, so they can just settle out. It makes it easier for the bottom parts that have stuck to the bottom of the pot and whatever to now get completely uh, taken off. So yeah, let's just turn off the heat quickly. So that's all the heat off. That's gonna stand for five minutes. I'm gonna give it one quick last stir. And then next up, I need to grind my barley. So my barley becomes nice and loose. And then um, add my corn. Okay, so like I said, just quickly gonna grind down my barley so I can also crack open those husks so those amylase can jump out and chew up all those starches and convert them to sugars for me. So same process as with the oats. That was a one kilogram of barley that I've malted. Um, don't know the exact weight that it's now, but it does have a lot of liquid in it. So probably after drying out, it will be, be like 750 grams or something. So yeah, um, gonna grab a couple of handfuls at a time and just grind them down. And yes, the stems, that are in there do contain protein and they will cause a lot of boil over so when we go to mash this in um, or when we go for the pre-boil I'm just going to allow it a nice protein break Okay, so our first part of the smoothie is done. There's our amylase smoothie, our barley smoothie. First half done. Let's get the next half in. If you're wondering what these uh, taste like, you know alfalfa sprouts? Mm. Those, just like them, nice and malted, all those amylase are available for us to use. So we've made soup out of them, that's going to go into our mash tub, whatever we want to call it. Okay, just 
Just rinse it with a bit of water. Get as much of those amylase as possible to convert all those starches that we're going to have into sugars. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to add my corn into my into my mash tin. So what I've done with my mash tin is I've sanitized it, I've done all those other things and I've also taken um, the mash tin or the cooler box and I've preheated it by adding hot water into it at close to the temperature that I want the tub to be. So there goes my two kilograms of corn. Next up I need to start adding my um, oats and I will only add my barley once this is at the right temperature because if you get these little babies over about 75 or 72 degrees um, they will start deteriorating on you. So I know this is not the easiest way to do this, um, but yeah, um, at the end of the day, like I said, I stay in a small town and a, a brew shop is not a uh, readily available commodity. So at the end of the day, this is how I try and uh, work with what I have. So next up what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a little bit of that hot water that I have in my boiler there. I'm going to add it to this here so I can just get a nice soupy mix. Then I'll take the temperature and I'll top it up with water up until I get to the level that I want. Cool. Remember to mix thoroughly, you don't want any dough balls to form. The moment you have dough balls, you're going to have trouble getting your sugars to work because a dough ball will stay completely dry on the inside. And beer brewers, please don't kill me for the method I'm using. This is for making whiskey, not making beer. Okay, so we have a beautiful soupy mix now. Let me just quickly take the temperature and see where we're at with the temperature. So we're currently sitting at about 69.3 degrees. Um, I'm just going to add a little bit of cold water into this uh, just to get that temp a little bit down. And then I'm going to add my amylase. wondering why I didn't pre-gel my corn. I didn't pre-gel the corn because uh, the corn is more there for flavor and uh, the oats is the main thing that I want to pre-gel to get all those lovely notes out of the oats. So uh, I'll be using the, the oats as my main flavor carrier and then the corn because it hasn't been pre-gelled you'll get that nice raw corn flavors coming through. So we are sitting at exactly 67 degrees centigrade. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to add my amylase in or my malted barley and we should be ready to roll. Okay, so we're sitting at exactly 67 degrees centigrade. It's now time to cap it, wrap it, and leave it for 90 minutes. After 90 minutes, those amylase should have broken down all of those starches, and uh, we should have a nice and sugary mix. If you taste the water now, it should taste very starchy, very doughy. It should smell like raw dough um, like an oats cookie or something like that and then when we open it up after 90 minutes you should be able to taste sweet like sugar type of sweetness 
out of the mixed year. Okay, so 90 minutes later, we'll check in with you guys again. Okay, so it has now been 90 minutes and it's time to crack open the lid on this bad boy and see if the amylase did their job. So what we're hoping to see is when we crack this lid is that the amylase has taken that thick soupy water and converted it into a nice runny liquid. If that has happened, that means that the proteins have now been, oh, the, 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 the starches have now been converted into a fermentable sugars. And yeah, we have a soupy liquid like no one's business. And all the grain is nice and loose. None of it is clumped together. And yeah, so I'm just gonna give it a quick stir around. Check that there is uh, no clumpy areas or anything, but yeah, it looks like the amylase did their job. Everything has now been converted. So next up, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna transfer my, um, my wash from my mash turn into my kettle and I'm gonna boil it to ensure that I have a good clean products like kill any bacteria that might have come into contact with uh, the wash. Okay, with some of the water now transferred into that vessel there, all I need to do now is sparge my grains or in uh, the terms that I understand, I need to wash them to get as much of that sugary liquid off those grains as possible. So if you have a false bottom uh, type of mash turn or something, then yes, it will be great and easy to do. But unfortunately, all I have is this bad boy here. So what I'll be doing is um, I'll be taking my bag that I have there. It's a 100% cotton bag. I'll be filling it with my grains, my spent grains. I'll be hanging it in here and I'll be dunking it in a little bit of water and then squeezing, dunking, squeezing up until I have um, as much of that liquid out as I feel uh, is sufficient and then uh, yeah, I'll transfer that into there as well and then get into the boiling pot. Okay, so in the brewing society, they tell you not to squeeze the bag um, as we are not going to be fermenting this and then drinking it right away and then spilling it. I haven't found any issues with squeezing the bag, so all I'm doing now is I'm just washing the grains and getting as much of that sugary water out. So this is hot water, uh, around about the same temperature as our mash temp. Just want to get as much of those sugars out as possible. So with a big bag of spent grain and some lovely sparged water, just going to transfer this into a bucket, pour it into my uh, pot and then uh, clean everything up and get boiling. Okay, so with everything transferred into the boiler, I have switched on the elements and um, I will be letting this come to a rolling boil and that's going to be for about 20-25 minutes of a rolling boil. After that, we're going to transfer it, let it cool down to pitching temperature as, 
as quickly as we can. Um, from here on out, anything that's going to touch this wort after you've boiled it, please make sure it's sanitized. Make sure that um, everything is clean as if you're going to be doing beer. So uh, I'm just going to do a quick clean up around while I'm waiting for this to get to a boil. Okay, so we've just uh, finished boiling this. So we ended up boiling this for a full 60 minutes instead of the 25 minutes that I intended. Um, well, can't do any harm for boiling it any longer. And uh, normally when you do beer, you do do a 60 minute boil. So um, what I'm gonna do now is I have sterilized my bucket and my sieve and all that. I'm gonna transfer this liquid bucket by bucket from this vessel here. So keeping the lid on top to keep the heat in. Um, I will be transferring it from here, taking it inside to my basin that I've filled with ice water, stirring it, getting it down to a, a acceptable temperature and then putting it into the fermenter. And I think I've got about 35 liters in here. So let's see how much we get out and uh, see if we need to fill two fermenters up. And then we'll test the specific gravity and see where we're at. So let's get to that. Okay, so after a good long while of trying to get all of these things to cool down to an acceptable temperature, it's not there yet all the way. Uh, it's got a couple of more degrees to go, but um, it is rather cold outside. Currently, it's about six degrees centigrade here where I am now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cap this, leave it for a couple of minutes just to get down to that pitching temperature for the yeast um and yeah then we will get it all pitched in and get ready as you can see the steam coming off of this by just spraying some uh, normal star sand on it you can see it's steaming um, the temperature currently on the inside of this here is about 40 degrees centigrade so um, i'll give it a couple more minutes to cool down and then i'll come back and i'll pitch the yeast uh, in the meanwhile, I'm just going to star sand um, the caps and uh, a little plastic bag that I have here. I'm just going to seal it off. So now buggies can come in up until we're ready to pitch our yeast. Mm -hmm. 